Well, after such a dominant performance in race number one, this man on board his, uh, his Ducati 1199, Bo Beaton, will occupy pole position, and he certainly wants to drive the nail in as much as he can on Michael McMillan carrying that injury. Yeah, he certainly does. And the other thing is too, Lance, that uh, even though he starts from pole position, he wants as many points as he possibly can to make sure that the challenge for the championship does go down to the final round, and if possible, the final race. And once again, we will see Tyron Van Buren and Brad Swallow from the back of the grid on their electric bikes. In pole position is beaten alongside of him, McMillan, Yanko and Griffin. They are the front row of the grid. We've got eight laps ahead of us here. This is race two of three in the seven Friday Pro Twins and Naked Bikes. And yet again, Van Vuren on board 21, threads the needle on that electric bike, but can't get the whole shot like he did in race number one. This time, it is Michael McMillan with Bo Beaton behind him. And then I think you'll find that it's Ryan Yanko on board his Ducati 998 in third. Yeah, Ryan Yanko has been riding unbelievably well this weekend, showing uh, all day yesterday and this morning so far what great corner speed he can have as Bo Beaton tucks in behind Michael McMillan. You can see how fast that Aprilia is. Bo Beaton on the Racers Edge Performance Ducati 1199 pulled out from the side of him out of the slipstream and just made, didn't make any further forward progress. The Aprilia is extremely fast on the top end, but as we said in race number one, the corner running speed for the Ducati is really one of its fortes. And watch it here into the two left-handers. This bike is uh, so fast through this section of the track. And in third place is an electric bike. Let's just remind ourselves of what this Voltron is all about. It's been developed in Western Australia by a group of enthusiasts. It started over a beer in a bar and uh, actually was given birth inside a container in the uh, garden shed, actually. Started off in a garden shed in the backyard and then progressed to a container. And now I believe they've actually got a workshop to work on it. Yeah, it's actually come forward in leaps and bounds over the last couple of years. And the biggest thing they did for it was lose a bit of the weight, but also put a bigger swing arm on it so they could put the wider rear tyre and it runs a 200 section rear tyre now and that's what enables it to get all of the power to the ground and as you can see it's keeping up with Heath Griffin's Panigale here at the moment it's certainly no slouch and uh, Tyron Van Buren in his first outing is doing a great job but what about Ryan Yanko he's still holding yeah. both of them at bay doing a great job excellent job there in third followed through then by uh the number 21 of Heath Griffin. So Ryan Yanko and Heath Griffin, condition normal for them, battling it out for the final podium place. Let's have a look at the replay again. There was no jump starts that we could see this time around. And you can see that Van Vuren there actually got a little bit balked by Dan Thomas in front of him that time. And he couldn't quite get the slingshot that he did in race number one and had to occupy himself back there in fourth place. Yeah, I think Dan Thomas was busy trying to get the front wheel of his FZ6 somewhere back <laughs> near the ground. Didn't get the uh, the best of starts, went skyward rather than forward. And here we see Bo Beaton pulls up next to the uh, RSV4, but can't get the uh, the drive out of the corner because that RSV4 is very fast in a straight line, as we said. But once we go into corner entry mode, there goes Bo Beaton sailing past on the brakes. Yeah, the window of opportunity was provided there in Sydney Motorsport Park ride days, turn number three, as Heath Griffin and Ryan Yanko continue their battle, heading down the Ipone Oils back straight into that Sydney Motorsport Park ride days turn. Remarkably different lines from a lot of riders on different classes of bikes as well through there, Phil. And it's a corner that widens and opens up and allows you to be able to continue to drive without sliding. Yeah, sometimes if you get in there a little bit deep, as long as you can square the corner off and get good drive out, you don't get penalised too much. And tell you what, this guy's not getting too penalised at the moment, Bo Beaton. He is in a class of his own at the moment. With Michael McMillan having that uh, small injury and Bo Beaton being on the top of his game, both in Pro Twins and in the Naked Bike class, he's uh, got a very subsidiary very substantial lead over McMillan at the moment and uh, then it's a big gap back to uh, the rest of the field that are making their way through uh, the Queensland Raceway circuit. As with any criminal lawyer you want to minimise the damage as much as you possibly can and that's exactly what Michael McMillan is doing this weekend with his injury as we can see there um, the electric bikes have completed their four lap journey and therefore he's pulling into the pits a, another victory there going down to the uh, Tyrone Van Vuren on board the Voltron Motorcycles Voltron Evo. Yeah, just looking at some slow motion replays here, you can see Bo Beaton on the brakes. Look how composed the Panigale looks down into uh, the corner. And uh, while that Panigale looks composed, uh, well, a big congratulations to Heath Griffin, the way that he's been riding this weekend, because he said he's not happy with the setup. He's wrestling the motorcycle. And uh, you could see that earlier on in the race. It actually 
looked a little bit untidy, but Heath was just grabbing it by the scruff of the neck and trying to get it round the corner. But Bo Beaton, look how good that bike is set up. I know they've been working with uh, Steve Mudford from Race Dynamics to try and fine tune the setup of the bike, and it's looking very, very good here this weekend. It's fantastic between Ryan Yanko and Heath Griffin. Yanko trying to square the corner up, get the drive down the uh, Swan Insurance main straight, but not able to as uh, the 21 of uh, Heath Griffin, the Ducati Panigale powers on down the main straight and into the first turn, which is shock treatment turn one. Yeah, you can, as we said before, you can see that uh, Ryan Yanko on board number bike number 82 is carrying a lot more corner yeah. speed. Look at him around the outside at turn two, whereas Heath Griffin on the Russell Symes and company Panigale has to be wrestling it to try and get it back on track. Richard Draper there on uh, board the Sugar Plum Racing entry, just being overtaken by our race leader as he cool, calm and collected, just pops a wheelie momentarily as he exits the final turn, Shark Leathers, turn number six. For the run down the straight to greet the chequered flag, Michael McMillan finishes in second. And here is this battle for third place. Will it be Heath Griffin? Will it be Ryan Yanko? Yanko on the yellow bike, trying the high, wide and handsome line. He gets the drive, but will he have enough mumbo jumbo to beat him across the line? The answer is no. Heath Griffin takes it out in third. Yeah, great ride there from all of those guys, but Bo Beaton takes the result from Michael McMillan. Heath Griffin repays the uh, favour to Ryan Yanko from race number one. Matt Edmonds, Dan Thomas, the first of our naked bikes home, and uh, Ian Goodwin, Bradley Lasseur, Richard Draper and Michael O'Keefe.